volumes. Um, we, we talked about already some of the scientists that were working with gases. We talked about Boyle, we talked about Charles, um, and now we're going to be looking at another gentleman named Avogadro, and we know him for Avogadro's number, um, which talks about the number of particles or objects in a mole of objects. Um, and Avogadro proposed that equal volumes of gas at the same temperature and pressure had equal numbers of molecules. So if we have one liter of gas, and let's call it hydrogen gas, so one liter of H2 gas, as long as the pressure and temperature are the same, this has the same number of molecules as one liter of, let's say, nitrogen gas. Now, if you look on your periodic table and do it, pause this if you need to, get out your periodic table. I'm serious, get out your periodic table. Like right now, let's do it. And then take a look. Hydrogen gas, H2. When you look at the molar mass of that, 2.02 .02 grams per mole. Nitrogen, 28.00 grams per mole. Interesting. And yet, if we have one liter of that, as long as the pressure and temperature are the same, that one liter of gas has the same number of molecules in it. You could even go and look at something like radon gas. Really heavy stuff. And yet, one liter of radon, one liter of nitrogen, one liter of hydrogen, assuming pressure and temperature don't change, the volume is going to be the same. All right. Now, we can use this along with balanced chemical reactions to predict volumes of oxygen required in a reaction to do actually what we call basic stoichiometry. So let's take a look here. We look at C4H10. Now we're going to combust this, which means we're going to burn it. It's going to undergo hydrocarbon combustion. This is everybody's favorite type of reaction. Um, it's Probably the most challenging one you're going to have in Chem 20 to have to balance. You guys can do it though. Okay. So hydrocarbon combustion is going to make as products carbon dioxide gas. It's also going to make water vapor or H2O gas. Alright. So we take a look. We look at the hydrogens. First, this is the best way to do this. Um, and then we look at carbons, then we look at oxygens. I would recommend, unless you've completely forgotten, pause this, see what you can do. So we've got hydrogen, there's 10 of them on this side, which would mean we would need to have 5 H2Os. That proves to be a problem because we've got an odd number of oxygens. As soon as we see that we'd have an odd number of water molecules and therefore an odd number of oxygen atoms, double up on the, for the hydrocarbon. So now we've got 20 H's, okay, which means we're going to need to have 10 H2O's. Now our number of oxygens is even. Okay, 2 times 4, there's 8 carbons, so we need an 8 over here. Um, now we look at oxygen atoms on the right hand side. We have 8 times 2 is 16, plus 10 more would be 26. We go, okay, what times 2 gives me 26? Oh, that's going to be 13. Alright, now, use the law of combining co volumes to predict the volume of oxygen needed to combust 120 milliliters of C4H10. And first we're like, okay, well we have volume here. We do have to make an assumption 
we have to assume that in order to make this work that the pressure let's look up here pressure and temperature is the same Okay, if we're if we're going to use the law of combining volumes, pressure and temperature have to be the same. So we can make that assumption, and then we look at this mole ratio. We need 13 moles of oxygen for every two moles of C4H10. That would apply to volume. So we would need, let's say, 13 liters of oxygen for every 2 liters of C4H10. C4H10, which is, by the way, butane. And so we can think, ah, we can do a little bit of math with this. We can say 13 moles of oxygen for every 2 moles of C4H10 are going to be equal to some number of milliliters of oxygen we'll call it X because we like algebra um, over 120 milliliters of C4H10 okay so now we do our some of you like to call it cross, multiply, and divide. Really, we're doing algebra here. We need to multiply both sides by 120 milliliters. So multiply that side by 120, multiply this side by 120 milliliters. All right. We punch those numbers in. Realizing, of course, the 120 on the top, 120 on the bottom. X equals, we punch our numbers in, 120 times 13, divide that number by 2. We're going to require 780 milliliters of oxygen in order to burn completely 120 milliliters of C4H10. Okay. Now, this got ahead of me here. There should have been a space. I thought there still was. This bit with Avogadro's theory actually goes with the next part on the next page. So if you want to draw an arrow down to this. Um, what we're saying here is that Avogadro's theory was expanded to molar volume. And basically, if we say all gases at e are at equal temperatures, and that equal temperature and pressure had an equal number of molecules, then a mole of a gas, of any gas, has to have a certain volume. So we give a, a definition to this. Molar volume is the, the quantity, and it's the volume that one mole of a gas occupies at a certain temperature and pressure. Um, it has been determined, and this is something that you can just trust to be true, that at STP, standard temperature and pressure, which would be 0 degrees Celsius or 273.15 Kelvin, and pressure, um, 101.325 kilopascals, one mole of gas occupies 22.4 liters. Now, if you take a look at this, your formula sheet that you do have, you actually look at it, it sort of requires a magnifying glass. Um, we can look at over here molar volume of a gas and this number is given to us. You'll notice at STP, standard temperature and pressure, 22.4 liters of gas per mole. And if we look at SATP, same number numbers given on there as well 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kilopascals one mole of gas occupies 24.8 liters okay now helium gas which is off or sorry helium gas well in balloons yes um, often used at parties they're less dense than air and so they stay aloft and will rise unless tied down this is lovely it's giving us context 
when you especially get to grade 12, they love to give you context and questions. But for the intents and purposes of what it's actually asking you, nobody cares. Um, and so in this case here, we say, okay, what volume does 3.50 grams of helium gas occupy at SATP? So we have to go, okay, how many moles is this? So we look at helium. Got helium. We need to find its molar mass. If you look on your periodic table, big M is equal to 4.00 grams per mole. Okay. We're given that we have a mass of 3.50 grams of helium. We need to find the total number of moles, so we can use our formula n is equal to little m divided by big M. n is equal to 3.50 grams divided by 4.00 grams per mole. The units will cancel out, so we'll end up with units here of moles. Do the division here, 3.5 divided by 4, and we have 0 0.875 moles. Now, we're not done yet. A couple ways to approach it from here. Um, we are told that it's at SATP, so one mole of gas occupies occupies 24.8 liters. Um, now, we're not looking for one mole, we're looking for 0 0.875 moles. At this point, we need to introduce a formula, um, and the formula we can use is V, and this would be the volume of a gas, is equal to the number of moles multiplied by the Vm, which is molar volume. So again, this is volume. Is equal to moles, which is N, like we've always been using, multiplied by molar volume. Now, this will either be determined... where you're told it's at STP or SATP, or you will be given temperature and pressure data, and this will be for a little bit later on, and you'll be able to use a different formula that we're going to talk about a little bit later today in order to um, make the calculation. Okay, so again, we plug our numbers in. V is equal to the number of moles, 0 0.875 moles. Now, in this case, that's the actual number. It's to the right number of significant digits. Um, in reality, it's not always going to be quite that nice. Um, what you'll need to make sure that you do if it's not quite that nice is you're going to need to make sure that you do not round this number. Leave the big number in your calculator. Don't round it until you're completely done. And we've got um, SATP, so one mole occupies 24.8 liters, or we can write it as the molar volume, 24.8 liters per mole. So we plug our numbers into the calculator. 0.875 times 24.8. We have here 21 point seven liters. So going back here, three point five grams of helium at SATP occupies twenty one point seven liters. So the density now we we could if we wanted now go back and find the density. D is equal to mass divided by volume from science eight. Okay, so we, okay, here's my mass, 3.50 grams, there's my volume. I could do that calculation as well. I'm going to find out that helium is not very dense at all. Okay. 
So that really is, you can do the same thing um, if you were given data at STP, you'll have questions like this. Um, Molar volume is a little bit of a goofy kind of thing because sometimes it looks like, hey, I don't have enough data here. Um, you do have enough data. And we're going to talk in just a moment about the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law is going to show you that, in fact, you don't have to use the molar volume. This is sort of a nice shortcut for you. Um, if you're given STP or SATP conditions. So this takes us to the second part of your notes, which is the ideal gas law. Um, An ideal gas is defined by these characteristics. We actually looked at these yesterday. Okay. If you need to pause now and take a break to, you know, get your brain working again, do that. All right. Let's get back at it now. Three major characteristics. Gas molecules are in constant random motion. The molecules travel in straight lines until they collide with other gas molecules or with the walls of the container. We assume that the molecules of an ideal gas are point masses. Mass that takes up no space has no volume. And molecules interact with one another and with the walls only through elastic conditions. They don't exert attractive or repulsive forces on another, one another. Um, in that elastic condition, the kinetic energy is conserved. A molecule might lose energy to another molecule, but the total amount of energy is constant, which means that in any interaction, pressure and temperature don't change. All right. Now, scientists now have the tools to measure quantities of gases. From Boyle's law, we can say that P times V give us a constant. From Charles's law, pressure divided by temperature gives us a constant. Now this is a little bit different than what we were, I say this is from Charles's law because when we looked at Charles's law, we said volume over temperature gives us a constant. Okay, I'm saying this is from Charles's law. A mathematical extension of it, if we know that Boyle's law holds true, whether we say P times V is equal to a constant, um, then we can say that either V over T or P over T gives us a constant. Okay. And finally, from Avogadro, the volume divided by the number of moles also gives us a constant of some sort. We can put these all together. Now, this is just derivation of the, the law. If this is uh, something that you're going, ah, I don't get the math here, don't worry about it too much. This is something we'll talk about later on. But we can put them together. We can say that PV divided by NT gives us a constant, and we call this constant R. The cool thing here is we can calculate R because we already talked back here looking back here, there we are, at STP or SATP. I've used STP conditions. You could do this with SATP conditions. <coughs> we can figure out what this constant would be. So if we substitute pressure at STP, 101.325 kilopascals, times the volume, 22.4 liters per mole. Oh, liters per mole, there it is, per one mole. At 273 Kelvin gives us this constant R. Do the math, work it through, we get a number of 8.31. Sometimes you're going to see it written, and I believe your data sheet, let's take a look at your data sheet, that's the wrong place, let's go to the actual data sheet. Data sheet gives it, oops, gives this to us, and eventually I'll make it so you can see it. Lovely, let's try to make a note, there we go. 8.314 kilopascal liters per Kelvin mole or per mole Kelvin as I showed the units in this other one. Okay, that's just the units. It makes it so that this thing works mathematically. Now, in this sense here, you're like, okay, lovely. You can calculate a constant. Big deal. This is called the universal gas constant. Mathematically, we write the formula as what we call the ideal gas law, and we write it commonly this way, 
PV equals NRT. Okay, all we've done here is we've gotten rid of this fractional business. So we've got NT. We multiplied here both sides by NT, and we have this. This is the form that you want to remember it in. PV is equal to NRT. In fact, back to your formula sheets, it's given to you there, and you can't see it because I've got red lines writing through it. Ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. Wonderful. Now, student did an experiment. Here's an example. 31.6 liters of gas was collected at a pressure of 127.6 kilopascals and a temperature of 77 degrees Celsius. How many moles of gas were present? Okay, so we have pressure. There it is. We have volume. There it is. We have... We want to find N. We know R. 8.31 or 8.314 on your data sheet. T, we're given that. Now, we've got to be careful. This has to be in temperature. It needs to be in Kelvins. All right, so we've got PV is equal to NRT. We need to change this 77 Celsius into Kelvins. And so we add 273. 77 plus 273. Punch those numbers correctly in our calculator. We get 350 Kelvin. We want to solve this for N. Let's get rid of my markings on here. And so what we're going to do is divide both sides by R times T. Now you can do this after you plug the numbers in or before. I like to do it before. It means I don't have to write them down nearly as much so I can show my work. And so I now have N is equal to PV over RT. I start plugging my numbers in. Pressure is 127.6. Pascals. At this point, I would recommend probably that you pause this and see what you can do to plug the numbers in yourself. Okay, multiplied by volume of 31.6 liters. All right, divide this all by 8.5. Three, one. We're going to use 8.314. Okay, now our, our, our units here are going to be kilopascal liters. And this is like a... No, it's not a nonsense unit. It's a mathematical necessity that the unit be this way. But it's not something that you're going to be able to imagine like, oh, the unit is a centimeter or a liter. Kilopascal liter per mole Kelvin is not anything that you can kind of give any kind of physical representation to. It makes it so that when we do the multiplication, the units work out. And I'll show you here in just a second. 350 Kelvin is our temperature. All right, so if we look here at our unit analysis, we have kilopascals on the top and on the bottom. We have liters on the top and on the bottom. We have kelvins here, oops, and we multiply that by, oh, something over kelvins. Oops, and we have to, there we go. We're left with no units divided by one over moles, which will work out to just moles, which is what we want. And so now we've got N is equal to... 127.6 times 31.6, divide that by 8.314, divide that by 350, um, and we end up with 1.38566911 or something like that in our calculators. We look back and say, oh, okay, there's three significant digits. Careful with this one. It does become three once we add the Kelvins in there. And so we have one point three nine moles. Now you notice I said this out loud. I did 127.6 times 31.6. 
I don't like using brackets on my calculator. Maybe I'm lazy. I'm not sure. I also just don't like to be messed up by them. So I did the 127 times 31.6. I pressed enter. I divided that by 8.314. I pressed enter. I divided that answer by 350. You can verify it if you'd like that if you do 127.6 times 31.6 divided by brackets 8.314 times 350 closing bracket, you'll get the same answer. Okay. Sometimes you need to calculate moles using the relationship you already know and we've used already dealing with the helium question. Okay. So 30 grams of neon gas at 25 Celsius occupies a volume of this much. What's the pressure? So let's look at it. Um, neon, we look at our periodic table. Molar mass is 20.18. And that's going to be grams per mole. Okay. Anytime you see 30 grams of neon gas, generally you're going to have to convert that into moles. Okay? So... We're given mass as well, 30 grams, 0 0.00, I should say. Now, when you want to look at this here, just a quick thing, to check that you're doing this formula right, maybe you don't remember this formula. You look and say, okay, one mole would have a mass of 20.18 grams. This is 30 grams. Hey, it's going to be more than one mole. All right. All right. So now we can figure out we have grams, we have grams per mole. It should be more than 1 mole and it's going to be um using our formula n is equal to, sorry, little m over big M 30.00 grams. Divide that by 20.18 grams per mole. Now you're not going to get a nice number in your calculator this time. And so you're going to want to make sure you keep that big unrounded number in your calculator. Okay, and so we've got our number of moles finally. 30.00 divided by 20.18. And we have 1.4866204016. You can write down here if you want. And I usually, if I'm going to write it down, which is not a bad idea, 4, 8, and then I'll write the next one, which is in my calculator, is a 6. And then I'm just going to say dot, dot, dot. To let me know, yes, there's those are the first ones, but there's more. This isn't my final answer, so it doesn't matter that it's unrounded. doesn't matter that it's not um, to correct significant digits. Now we need to find pressure. One quick little note here. The units for our ideal gas, gas constant, going back up here, take a peek at them. Units for, eventually, there it is, liters, kilopascals per mole, Kelvin. This tells us really what the, the the units have to be for all of the other stuff we put in. Liters, that's volume. Kilopascals, moles, and kelvins. So that's just a good reminder. If you see that, you're like, oh yeah, that's what my units have to be. <gasps> Here, 0 0.0193 milliliters. We have to change that to liters. In order to change that to liters... So we need to figure out our volume here. Volume is equal to, there's lots of different ways to do this. You can say, oh, okay, lead, if we want to go from milliliters into liters, one of the ways to look at it is, it, okay, we just divide by 1,000. Um, you can also go ahead and um, do a little bit of unit analysis. At this point, I'm going to say, Milliliters to liters, we divide by a thousand. We'll look at some unit analysis um, a little bit more next unit. No pun intended. So 0 0.0193 milliliters, we divide by a thousand. 
and we end up with obviously a very small number of liters 0 0.0193 let's try that again 0. Zero point zero one nine three divide that by a thousand. Um, we now have. I'm going to write it in scientific notation so that I can ar avoid writing quite so many zeros. Um, one point nine three times ten to the negative five liters. And now, finally, um, we're almost ready to write down our PV equals nRT and substitute in this needs to be Kelvin's. So we've got 25 plus 273 is 298. And so our temperature, this is 298 Kelvin. I like to write all over my questions. Um, if you've got room, that works. Otherwise, you need to record it somewhere if you're trying to show your work. We need pressure, so we rearrange by dividing both sides by V, so we get pressure by itself. And so we have P is equal to NRT over V. Which is equal to, I've got my moles here. So again, at this point in time, good idea to pause if you haven't already and give this a try on your own. Oops. P is equal to 1.486. I've got this number in my calculator still. This is the 6 dot dot dot. Okay, it's a big number. Do not round it yet. If you're dealing with a numerical response question, and this is this kind of comes to Chem 30 stuff, but if you're dealing with a numerical response, you need to not round it until the end. You might mess yourself out of a mark. Okay. And PV equals NRT, so 8.314 kilopascal liters. Per mole Kelvin. I'm my temperature of 298 Kelvin. All of this divided by my volume, which is 1.93. It's 10 to the negative 5 meters. Plug the numbers in. Do the math, and we have our 1.4866204016 times 8.314 times 298. All of that divided by 1.93 times 10 to the negative 5. We get a very large number here for our pressure. Does it make sense that we have a large number? Absolutely it does. We have 30 grams of neon at room temperature and it's confined to way less than a milliliter. So pressure of our gas and we have, and I would change this on my calculator, I get, um, what would it be? 190,839,850. This is a huge number. This is obviously one of those the teacher made up the numbers and didn't really check them beforehand. Here it is again. Um, it's a big number. Let's go with, instead of that, let's change it to 1.91. And we look here, yeah, three significant digits times 10 to the, well, we'd have to move the decimal place, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10 to the 8th kilopascals. Now, 
And that's what we end up with. So any problem can be solved if you know four of these five variables. Now, usually we use r, and you can fill this in, is equal to 8.314 kilopascal liters. mole Kelvin. Unless we wish to calculate the value. Usually we're going to say, yeah, that's what we want. Sometimes we're going to just calculate that value and see what we come up with. Um, but usually you'll be given three values plus you know this one and so you can get the fifth value. Alright, so now you guys have a worksheet. I called it lots of gas. Um, I know, very funny. Um, and you've got lots of stuff to do on that one. Um, what I would like to have happen is the questions from yesterday need to get done first. The lots of gas problems, you're going to have time on Monday to work on them, but you need to work on those as well because there's lots of work to do. Lots of gas is going to be due Tuesday. Um, remember, though, that Monday... You have a quiz.